The sporting world is no stranger to the concept of the useless match. You know those late regular season matchups between mid-table teams where no one's getting promoted, no one's getting relegated, they're just there fulfilling their contractual obligation. Never before, though, have I ever seen a useless match in the playoffs, but I think we found one. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. This is episode number 47, and we are seeing something today that I think we have never, ever seen in the history of football, and that is a playoff tie that means absolutely nothing. I am fairly certain that here in the closing stage final, it doesn't matter who wins, it doesn't matter who loses, because both of these teams are making it to the grand final. I could be completely wrong. If we beat Punta Arenas, we will naturally advance to the grand final like we're supposed to. But as you know from watching last episode and the episode before, and if you have not, check it out now. You can pause and go there. Don't worry. I'll wait. But we've already qualified for the grand final. So does that mean that the grand final just doesn't happen and we are crowned champions at the end of this two-legged tie if we win? Or... Doesn't mean that Punta Arenas, even though they lost, gets through to the grand final and we have to do this all over again. The beautiful thing is, I don't know, and we're finding out together. Now, because only a few days have passed since we played the home leg in the last episode of the semifinals, we're going to be making just a few changes to the lineup as we rotate some guys in for the third consecutive match. David Hernandez is going to get the start in goal. Our back four is going to be Gonzalez and Asente coming back in. Gerald Taylor staying in for the second straight game. And Daniel Herrera, our midfield two, will be Steven Aquista, although we're going to have to keep our eye on him. We did have to pull him out of the last match a little bit early because he was a bit knackered. He will be there paired up now with Emmanuel Chacon. Diego Mendez will be manning the 10 on the left wing. We're giving the opportunity to Guillermo Sanchez. Johnny Castro getting the start on the right-hand side. But Esteban Cordero in his usual spot as our striker, hoping to add to his 19 goals so far this season. If you're wondering about a few of those changes, especially surrounding the players that have been doing such a fantastic job for us, Alien Casada Thorne is one yellow card away from suspension, although we should probably have played him in this match. If he picks up the yellow card, he'll be suspended for the second leg, which probably doesn't matter, and would be able to come back and have no worries moving into the grand final, although maybe yellow cards get wiped away for the grand final. I don't know. But Ramon is also not available today. He has been suspended because of too many yellow cards, so he is getting the night off, and that is why Sanchez and Castro are going to be making their playoff debuts. Cordero sending in the corner, looking for Innocente. It's going to drop. A penalty is going to be called. Montano pushed Gonzalez. And once again, Cordero with an opportunity from the spot. This will be his fourth penalty attempt. This time, he doesn't make it. So three out of four ain't bad as Punta Arenas able to clear it. That would have been a beautiful opportunity for us to take a 1-0 lead about midway through this first half. In fact, almost exactly midway through. Aquista, Sanchez, back wide, thrown toward the back post. Araya will clear it, but Chacon will step in front of it. Chacon into the box, into the middle, cleared away. Herrera gets it back. Herrera with a drive, and he just misses that top far corner. Beautiful play by Saprisa. Good ball movement. Even though Punta Arenas did do a nice job defensively getting the ball cleared, it was recycled very quickly by Saprisa. So we are playing, we are playing at the top of our game right now. 70% possession. We are dominating in XG and we are dominating in shots on goal. So we've had the most opportunities. Taylor up for Castro. He'll be sandwiched, but Chacon will get the loose ball. Fed wide for Herrera, charging forward. Castro taking it into the box. Castro still with it. Deep into the middle. Knocked away by Fernandez. It'll come to Espan Cordero. And there's his 20th goal of the season. He couldn't convert from the spot, but he does from inside the six-yard box. On the rebound, it's a priest of one. Punta Arenas nil. And this was just... That tenacity that we've been showing. Castro almost loses the ball, keeps it, playing it into the middle. IU making the initial save, but ball played to Cordero, who picks it up and puts it home to give Saprisa the 1-0 lead. Now, 
We are taking advantage of the fact that we are at home and we have played generally very well at home as Punta Arenas looks to make a change at the half. Eight to three, your shots on goal. Make that eight to four. Punta Arenas has yet to get a shot on target. And as I say that, I know we're going to see one right here. Okay, maybe not. Thank you, Football Manager, for proving me wrong. Sanchez picking up the clearance drop for Chacon. He's going to be challenged by Torres, so he'll lay it back to Gerald Taylor, who will look to get things restarted via David Hernandez. Taylor with the ball. Once again, back to Hernandez. Is it David or David? I think it should be David. I think I'm mispronouncing. My apologies to all of my Spanish-speaking friends for my terrible Spanish pronunciation, or my lack thereof in this particular case. Taylor across for Innocenti. Takes it through the midfield circle before playing it toward the near sideline. Gonzalez up for Sanchez. Quick cross in the middle. Can't find Cordero. Cleared away Castro. Looking for Cordero the second time, and he finds him. Second goal of the match, 21st of the year, and Cordero puts us up 2-0. After spending so much time in yesterday's episode complaining about how we were doing absolutely nothing in open play, we have become absolute open play merchants. Cordero off of the corner, headed on and clanked off of the crossbar. Another great opportunity. It could and should be 3-0, hitting the woodwork for the first time. 13-4, 13-5, excuse me, your shot's on goal. But again, still not a single shot on target for Punta Arenas. Gonzalez this time can't get over the header and he'll pop that over the bar. We've got just over 15 minutes remaining in this match. Again, we were talking about some tired legs. Alejandro Braun's going to come in for Stefan Aquista. Freddy Gonzalez will go out and Quesada Thorne will come in. We're going to risk him, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe I should just put him on tackle harder and just... Kind of get it over, uh, get it out of the way. We're also going to see what Kilver Gomez can bring to us. Gomez is a player that even at the age of 29, we just have not given him an opportunity. He is in excellent, uh, is in excellent mental condition. His his mindset coming into this match is fantastic. Just outside the 18, Brand free kick gets it around the wall and past the keeper Alejandro Brand with his fifth goal of the year. It's a priest at three, Punta Arenas nil, and I look like a tactical genius making the change when we did. And when I say things like that, I'm I'm not being an egotist. I'm saying it with tongue planted firmly in cheek. I know that I get lucky. I do not know what I'm doing when it comes to Football Manager. That's why you are all here, because you enjoy my little moments of, really, dude? How do you not know that? Punta Arenas with their first true attacking highlight. Rojas, looking back post, finds his man in Leal, but it's going to go over the crossbar. Hernandez, not forced to make a save. Eight shots on goal for Punta Arenas. Not a single shot on target. We have absolutely dominated this match from start to finish. Punta Arenas doing absolutely nothing. Finally, making David Hernandez do something at the very end of this match. But it's going to end with Saprissa in the driver's seat in this tie. A pair of goals from Esteban Cordero. Neither of them from the spot. And Alejandro Braun on the free kick with his fifth. Giving Saprissa a 3-0 aggregate lead heading into the match. At Punta Arenas. So because we don't have any highlights of other matches going on, it's just the two live comms. We've got a little bit of time to kill to make sure that these episodes aren't too short and give away any information just by the length of them. A couple of things that I do need to point out. When I hesitate when I'm talking about Cordero, I know his first initial is E. His name is Esteban Cordero. But whenever I see Cordero, I think of the actor Eugene Cordero. Shout out to Star Trek Lower Decks if you are a fan. If you if you do like the show, drop drop some love in the comments. I, I just want to see more people comment on these videos, to be fair. So Esteban Cordero, I just have to drill it in. He has been absolutely fantastic in these playoffs. 21 goals on the season. He has been so very good for us at 23 and a Costa Rican player. He may be a keeper. The other thing is the name of our opponent in this tie. I keep saying Punta Arenas because I don't want to trip over my words, and I know the A is there. However, there's only one A there. It's Punta Arenas. Punta Arenas. 
It's not Punta Arenas, it's Punta Reinas. So once again, if we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here while I have screwed things up. Ah, the Mr. Cellophane channel, you come for the football manager, you stay for the random Shakespeare references. If you do know what play it's from, let me know in the comments. I want to see how cultured our audience is. And if that sounds condescending, I apologize. We are heading into the second leg of the closing stage final. If we win, we make the grand final, which we've already talked about, we've already made. So let's find out what happens after this match. Let's win the match first uh, as we rotate our squad once again. David Hernandez is going to be our constant in goal. It's going to be a back four of Quesada Thorne, Gubane, Gerald Taylor making his third consecutive start. He has played very well. We haven't really called his name, and for a central defender, that is a very good Thing. The youngster Cordero is going to be on the right back. This time it's going to be Bran and Akista paired together in the midfield. Marrera at the 10. Ramon is back in. He will be on the left wing. It will be uh, Guillermo Sanchez on the right hand side. And the man of the playoff so far, Esteban Cordero, once again leading the line as our striker. It will be very interesting to see what happens at the end of this match. If we are crowned champions, then we know that the grand final just is not going to exist because it doesn't need to exist. Because why do we have to prove that we are champions against the team that we literally just beat to make it to that final? We are in our purple home kits, Punta Arenas, wearing the RNC. I'm already learning from my mistakes and I'm incorporating the actual name of the team into the same video that I screwed it up. I am learning in real time. We are also going to figure out in real time what is going to happen next. We've got a 3-0 aggregate lead in this tie. And through the first 20 minutes, not a ton going on. Neither team really going on the offensive, although Punta Arenas enjoying nearly two-thirds of the possession so far in the early going. Also 100% of the yellow cards as Sergio Rojas has been booked. 35 minutes in, Saprisa, the only team with a shot on goal. David Hernandez to send it long in the 38th minute. Can't get it to Cordero, but Brand will win it back. Marrera dropping it back to Aquista, quickly ahead looking for Ramon, but Rojas will step in front of it and play it to Mason. Mason dropping it back for IU, who will look to start it up from inside his own 18. Throwing it forward, looking for Ali. Gubane will deal with it. Marrera playing it ahead, but Garces is there. And once again, Punta Arenas in control. Mason from the back. Playing it up for Leal will give it back to Mason. Controlling the ball in their own end. So, yes, they are enjoying possession, but they haven't really made much in the way of inroads into our territory. And as I say that, Mendez plays it toward the edge of the box. Mahecha dropping it back for Johnston. He's got Mendez looking back post. Lorenzetti finds the back of the net. His 11th goal of the year, Jose Mendez picking up the assist. It's 1-0 Punta Reynas on the night. 1-3, Saprisa still leading on aggregate. Football manager, we got through over 12, 13 minutes of this video. I'm just going on a guess because I haven't started editing it yet. Without you using my own words against me, why did you have to do it there? One half in the books and Punta Reynas turning things on in the final 10 minutes or so of that first half. Six shots on goal to three. They've managed two on target, one finding the back of the net. They are leading one Nil. What, what? This is... Okay. This is one of my options. What a 45 minutes that was. You've blown them away. This is an issue that I have with football manager. Football manager seems to treat two-legged ties as one match. As uh, Punta Reina is looking to make the same move as Salas comes in. Ali off of the corner. Can he find Mendez? No. Messin Wait. A penalty. Ramon pushed Mendez. And an opportunity for Punta Reynas to go up 2-0 on the night, and they take advantage. Pulling within one on the tie. But football manager seems to think that a two-legged tie is one match. So we could have been losing 2-0, but as long as we're still winning the tie, my options for the team talk would all be centered around how well we are doing, even though we are actually losing the match. And we do need to get better. Cordero playing it. Mahecha. In control, Mendez 
Up for Lorenzetti, stolen away by Taylor. Marrera quickly turning it back up. Cordero, though, bad pass towards Sanchez, and Johnson takes over, moves it into the box. Johnson with a shot, and Hernandez will grab onto that and hold on. We need to demand more from our team, and we need to do it now. We've got 30 minutes. We just need to hang on. Because I really want to see what happens if we win the tie. If we lose the tie, then it's moot. And we're playing the grand final against Punta Arenas. And it's like these two matches didn't even happen. There is the possibility. Uh, Lorenzetti just too strong. And Hernandez doesn't need to make the save. 10-5, your shot's on goal. We've got 25 minutes left to go. And we're going to need to make some... Ramon just not doing it. Quesada Thorne's going to come in in his place. We um, have absolutely no one who can naturally play left back, although Orlando Gallo, Gallo can play left wing back. Gerald Taylor is also tired, um, but Innocente is not on my bench. I don't have, I don't have any other defenders. I really need to do a better job of making sure that my bench is stacked. I have no more midfielders either, or at least no more defensive midfielders. Why do I need defensive midfielders when I just need a regular? Midfielder, So, Akista's going to come out. We're going to put Johnny Castro in that spot. If he can play on the right side, he can play up the middle, right? Because that's how it works, right? 2-0, your score. 15 minutes to go. Throw in, and Punta Arenas in control. Turned over, though, to Braun. Marrera, he's got it. Out wide, Casada Thorne finds Castro. Edge of the box with a shot. Hits it off of the crossbar, and Johnston will clear... But it looks like Esteban Cordero was offside. I don't even think that he touched it, so I'm not sure why that was such a problem. We're going to go more balanced, and we're also going to try to slow things down, and we'll play for set pieces and be more disciplined. And I apologize if it's, it feels like it's gotten a little bit darker. It has. It just started raining at the time of recording this episode. So, yeah, more fun. I'm glad my kid's not out. Uh, in this rain right now, they walk down to the convenience store. Just over two minutes remaining in added time. Marrero will drop it down to Cordero. Feeds Sanchez. It looks like Punta Arenas is pressing. Sanchez taken down, but Brand picking up the loose ball. Gallo with it, carrying it into the box. Doing a little ladder move, I don't know. And he feeds Diego Marrero, who's got his 10th goal of the year. Double digits for Marrero. And that will put this tie out of reach for Punta Reynas. It's 2-1 on the night in favor of the home team. So we are going to lose the battle. But we should win the war as we now lead 4-2 on aggregate. Diego Marrera putting it home. IU just that little bit out of position. And this one is over. No trophy lift. So I guess we move on. And I'm flabbergasted. Like this could not be more anticlimactic. Saprisa have done the double. I guess if you've already qualified for the grand final and then you win to qualify for the grand final, then they just call off the grand final and call you champs. So on the one hand, I'm very glad that, that we have met our obligations and did what we set out to do. I went in my trophy lift. Why do I have to keep being denied the trophy lift? If you like that, make sure you hit the thumbs up. I guess we're going to start with the transfer window in our next episode. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hope you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. All of those other reminders, yada, yada, yada. Feed the algorithm. You got it. I'll see you tomorrow. What's this team going to look like? We're going to find out together. Until then, bye bar.